I'm sharing my screen. Okay. So as I just give the introduction as well, I mean, we have almost completed as the basic crash course. I think uh, if we are learning the thing, Hopefully, we have quite some idea. If we are starting from zero, then obviously we have some idea. Maybe if we already joined a company and working over there, then maybe our, our knowledge has been brushed up. Okay. So we are able to uh, do some exercise to get uh, some knowledge on top of that. But um, definitely, I can tell that uh, th this this will might, uh, that will help you. Uh, for learning the data and the basics of data and why we require that kind of data engineering thing. How that should be useful from the business perspective. Why the industries nowadays requires the business intelligence, the data scientists, all those kind of stuffs. So this is why the data engineers, they are required this kind of technologies and everything. Okay, cloud computing is also a part of this data engineering nowadays because uh, Cloud computing, it's, I mean, it's not on top of architecture only nowadays. Even the developers, they can choose or they can suggest the architect that you need this kind of cloud component for your, uh, I mean, for developing the code and everything that uh, whatever existing is there, you do not require this one or you can mention the disadvantages, you require this one. So this is why cloud computing plays a, a good role over here. Although some big companies, the data engineers could not directly involved with cloud computing. There are cloud architects as well. They can architect or they can design what should be the cloud, uh, what component we will be using, what should be the cloud pipeline. We just only focus on the coding part. Okay, so based on what is the company's model or company's role, uh, the cloud computing should be owned by a different team or maybe the data team as well. Specifically, as per my experience, when I worked in a small company, then I also need to manage some of the uh, deployment part from the cloud itself. Okay, suppose I, uh, just a quick experience, I worked as a big data developer in one of the company. Over there, uh, a big data means there should be master node, core nodes, everything. In a cloud, I need to take the component which will take big data processing. That is in AWS, I took EMR clusters there. So there, what should be the master node? What should be the age node and everything? Uh, I need to uh, mention the memory size, uh, I mean the RAM, ROM for each of the nodes and all. So those kind of stuff uh, I can determine based on what kind of, if this is a millions of records and the old cluster is not working, then I can suggest the cloud architects we need this kind of EMR clusters. Even we can deploy at our side. Just we need to check the pricing part with the uh, architect and all, okay? Business user. Okay, the detailing part will be coming one by one when we'll be landing the slides and all. So. Today onwards, uh, the thing will not be technical, not too much hands-on and uh, rather we can, we, I have the screenshot pasted over there in slides so you can have the idea on top of that. So let's go ahead with what is cloud computing first of all. So uh, just stop, I mean, we are learning the thing in front of laptop, okay? Uh, we are learning, suppose uh, over here, I have installed Python over there in a soft, I mean, in a server. This is my local server. This should be gone actually. Is this for this chat? I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah, Python I have installed in my local, but suppose I'm working for a company. Okay. So I need to run Python. So Python should be hosted or the software should be hosted or software may be installed in a particular server. It should, it should not be our machine only. It should not be any business owner's machine because business owner machine should be very much sensitive one. If everyone, if developers are going to get access to this machine, then that should not be good one for the business owner. Okay. So whom machine we should use or who, whose machine we can install Python or MySQL as well. So that is why cloud computing is required. 
So thus is that particular uh, software or the particular program may be installed in a particular machine, which can be accessible remotely from any any corner of the world. Uh, I mean, any developers can work on that, any support team can support that code there as well. So that's why the particular code can be written or in a particular cloud computer, okay? So the computer is being accessible for every developers who wants to develop the code. Even every support member who will be supporting the code, maybe the data scientist person, maybe some business user who needs, who has some technical ability, they can also check the code. So each of the region from the earth, they can use that code by their side. But this, I mean, the server is being accessible for everyone. So that's why it's a concept, it's been hosted in cloud. So actually it's not a cloud. So it's a hardware basically, definitely. And it's located in, in some region. There are lots of data center available for each of the cloud vendors. There are lots of vendors actually, just like AWS. Uh, those are called cloud providers, not vendors. AWS, Google, Microsoft, Azure. Those are the three main uh, cloud providers. What do you know exactly? And I mean, based on each of the project requirement, they choose anyone or maybe they can work in hybrid mode. Uh, some component they are renting it from AWS, maybe some components they're renting uh, from Google Cloud, just like this one. Based on the components, accessibility and availability, as well as the efficiency. What is the efficient one? So based on that, Cloud Architect might have the uh, knowledge which component to be used for which purpose and which component is having, uh, I mean, also cost effective, we need to check, okay? Their performance as well. So based on all those key terms, architects can choose which cloud provider need to be chosen and which component we need to take up for the design of the software and all. So that's why uh, the cloud computing is playing the key role. I mean, each of the company, they are migrating the stagnant or maybe the uh, ongoing on-premises devices to cloud computing. Now it is, okay. So just going to the basics of, I mean, some basics topics of cloud computing, then we'll be going with some more deeper topic, okay. So what is cloud computing over there? Uh, the basic thing is cloud computing is an on-demand delivery of compute power. So what we are doing from our laptops, the database storage also been used by my servers, my local laptop over here. Even some applications I have installed over here, the same thing can be done. The compute power I can, I can uh, uh, get it rent from another machine. Suppose uh, I am just giving you a demo to the software. This software is very much uh i mean it's uh, it's 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 the software is not very much heavy over there so that i have 8 gb ram and it can be accessible or it can be doable by this 8 gb ram that is fine maybe uh tomorrow or day after tomorrow uh, there may be requirement from your side that you want to learn this software maybe tableau is one of the visualization tool okay and uh, then, I mean, that particular visualization tool requires a lot of RAM, maybe 16 GB RAM or more than that. And that particular RAM cannot be supported to my system over here. So then I need to buy another laptop with high configuration. Okay. But over here, if I choose, if I log into one of the cloud providers there, I purchase or I get rent a server okay from their side for a few days maybe for seven days maybe for 10 days and i just install the thing with i just chosen the server i have chosen the server based on uh, the particular configuration i required over there okay it's available i mean there are lots of uh, i mean context i mean everything is available there based on the combination I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of combinations of configurations are available there. So uh, we can check that configuration, what is suitable for us. We just need to check the pricing part as well because the higher configuration, the pricing should be always higher. So we need to check that thing and we need to 
rent it from our side. And after renting it, we can install the stuffs. We can have this thing with screen sharing session. Whatever we are doing the thing, we can remotely log into this particular server and show you the same thing. That should be a better idea because when the course will be ended, I can decommission this server. So based on this part or maybe based on which time I'm opening the server, I'm installing the thing, I'm doing the demonstration of the software in front of you, that computing power, based on this computing power, I'll be paying to this cloud provider. The rest of the stuffs, the rest of the time, I can make my system idle and I will not pay uh, because I'm not using the compute power for the rest of the day. So after seven or eight days, I can decommission my server. After that, no need to pay for anything. My requirement has been completed. So uh, I can sell this uh, to this my cloud computer, I mean, uh, cloud provider again. So no need to store the thing. Okay, for a single purpose, we can use this kind of uh, usage of uh, particular cloud computing. And the second topic, obviously, pay as you go pricing. So the price is already been mentioned over there for each of the component. We need to check it carefully. And maybe the compute for compute power, maybe the price should be based on hour. So uh, just like uh, $1 per hour, this kind of this, this kind of stuff. It's not too much expensive, actually. I'll be showing you the pricing calculator. You can see it's just like 0 0.002 dollar per hour for some computing power of some component okay so based on our requirement we can choose what should be the effective one and we can deploy it or we can spin up the server at the cloud side and we can easily access from this laptop itself remotely connecting to that one okay just i gave you the basic introduction any any doubt to anyone what is cloud computing and all. I'll be going with more deeper uh, uh, thing, the next slides, okay? I hope nothing, it's understandable. Hopefully, I think you are also learning. Yeah, Devi, you were telling something, yes, sorry. Sir. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's fine, thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, so cloud, I think you were also been uh, able to hard hear the thing. Uh, from maybe if you were just going to have the interview, then you can see that some of the interview they are requiring this kind of cloud. Uh, maybe they need some GCP expert. Maybe they need some uh, AWS. I mean, um, as your database expert, there you. I mean, if you are not a uh, uh, beginner one, then they can ask this kind of thing. Maybe you are you have some experience on cloud, then they they can ask you that whether you have learned this kind of stuff or not. Okay, so yeah, and uh, just this course is basically, I mean, it's two days course for cloud computing and another one day for GitHub. And the last working day or last two working days, I'll be learning um, big data. That is the plan. And then we can finish the session. And uh, whatever in two days, we can cover the basic things. And we, we have chosen AWS over here as this crash course, okay? I'll be coming to the AWS that is from Amazon. My computer is not, yeah, it's fine. So this diagram also, I think you have seen over there. Uh, the, the first column refers the on-premises devices. And the, these three columns are cloud provider. I mean, uh, cloud can provide this kind of services. IaaS that is infrastructure as a services, PaaS platform as a services, software as a services. So what is the what are the difference between this all this? So the on premises one that I am just operating on this laptop that is the on premises system we can tell over here. Over here we can see the boxes. Some boxes are uh, in orange color. Some of them are green color. So the green one we are managing. So the on-premises, we can see all the things are green. That means this is our laptop. In my on-premises laptop, we are uh, maintaining or we are managing everything. The applications, the data, the runtime, middleware, OS, uh, any OS, I mean, any patch needs to be, I mean, uh, patch needs to be installed. Any virtualization I need to 
just i need to install some graphics card uh, servers as well storage capacity i need to add some more hard disk networking thing so everything is managed by us on premises okay but when cloud will be providing us the uh, particular i mean what i can say uh, i mean the applications are that they are particular I mean, cloud will be providing us their, their activities and all. Then that should be in three kinds. So maybe they can provide the infrastructure support to us. The latter part, we can manage. Okay, so these four are infrastructure part. And we are managing only this thing. Cloud can help us by supporting us with platform as a services where uh, the orange color, that means this thing, Cloud will be managing and these two only we can manage only these two and software as a service cloud can provide us the entire software where cloud will be managing everything. No need to uh, install, no need to do anything on top of that one. So basically, obviously, you know that if we just take rent of these services, software as a services, it will be uh, much more having it. The cost should be much more. On, for this one okay because i'm i'm uh, nothing to manage over here over here huh, we have to manage something over here we have to manage a lot of things but over here we need, no need to manage anything so uh the pay i mean the paying thing the costing part it's it should be higher over here uh rather this thing it's it's why okay now just let me give an example over here server storage networking that should be provided by cloud so i have uh, just take rent of a particular server and the other things have been managed by us i need to install an os there maybe it's windows or maybe it's uh, another maybe linux i need to install the thing with my own payment i need to install the middleware okay i need to check the runtime things the data the applications so everything I need to manage over here. So that is called infrastructure as services. So I just take the server as a rent and everything should be as per my wish. Okay, any antivirus I need to install. Okay, over here, platform as a services, I just have to manage the application and data. So they can, uh, the OS they will be providing to us, the middleware support they can uh, give it to us. Server storage, obviously, it's already been there from the IAS part. I just need to install the particular software there. Just like I told you, maybe I just need to install the tablet over there. The OS is ready for us. Okay. So that kind of cloud providers is platform as a services. And over here, software as a services, I can directly choose a server where tablet is already been installed. Rather, I do not need to check the server itself. I need to check only the component tablet. Okay. So tablet is there. If I open the system, Tableau is there or rather if I click on Tableau at the remote side, it should be hosted maybe a remote desktop or anything, but Tableau will be open in front of my side. No need to install Tableau or no need to maintain Tableau and their database storage or anything. Okay, so these three are different kind of services provided by them. Uh, we need to choose if we are quite technical, then we can choose this thing or platform as a services because I just need to take rent from their side, but the software thing I can download from website and install it. No need to pay higher thing, I mean uh, higher cost over here. So this is as per our wish. Maybe uh, if we just want to get rid of patch installation, software upgrade, uh, upgrade activity, then we can use software as a service because cloud team they can take everything i um, mean those services um, i mean take everything they they should have the responsibility if the software is down they can quickly uh, bring back to them up okay and there will be no data losses it should be their responsibility to keep it running and uh, always up to date the version of the particular software and everything Okay, so this is just for your learning purpose. Maybe the other questions, if you are joining as a cloud architect as well as cloud practitioner or cloud developer, so this kind of questions may ask you. Okay, they will be giving you scenario, then what should be your, your uh, uh, fundamental knowledge or if what thing you will be choosing 
if you were a cloud architect. Okay, moving to the next topic. What are the advantages of the cloud computing? So, yeah, it's there, easier IT system management, very low upfront cost, downtime is very less, okay? Disaster recovery. Okay, suppose uh, I'm working in, I mean, I, I, I have taken AWS for the cloud provider. I have chosen a particular region, but the same thing can be taken into backup in another data center as well. So uh, for disaster recovery, if suppose one of the data center got lost or got damaged, so we can uh, get it recovered from another region. So cloud is having that capability. Accessibility, obviously we can access it from anywhere. Scalability, suppose we are working in a server and uh, someday I check the server, I need to add some more hard disk. Okay, otherwise uh, my server will not be working properly. So that time we can quickly scale it up or scale it down based on our requirement, but it should be hardly take within some seconds. Within some seconds, we can modify it. Okay. Lightweight of the device. We do not need to carry the servers with us. Okay. So it's very lightweight from our side. We are not doing anything that should be managed by cloud providers only. Okay, so those are all the advantages if we are using cloud computing on top of on-premises devices. Fine, I'm going to the next topic. Okay, so if we are adopting cloud, what should be with us? What minimum things we just need to check? We need to have an internet connection. Uh, we should be having a good security as well. We need to pay recurring monthly cost because if we're going to log in to the console of the cloud providers, we need to uh, add a credit card there. So monthly recurring cost, we need to pay. Whatever we are using the thing, we need to pay it by your credit card and all. So recurring monthly cost is there and all the control should not be with us because on on-premises, the device, I can install everything. I can uninstall everything over there in the server. Even I am the admin of the server, okay? I can do anything from for the my system, my laptop. But if you're adopting cloud, that should not be possible. There should be limited control. Limited means we, we should be having all of the controls, but based on our requirement, uh, the control, uh, I mean, we are not admin of the system. Maybe we are admin for some of the parts of the system, but uh, th that is called, that is why it's limited control. The admin admin thing should be with the cloud provider themselves okay okay give me one second please <laughs> okay fine so uh, for this crash course, we have chose we have chosen AWS uh, for the quick learning session. So let me just go through uh, AWS once. Okay. AWS login. Okay. So if we have an AWS account, then we can just log into this and the AWS should be in front of us. Uh, if we do not have an AWS account, we just need to create an AWS account. We just need to give us, give all the details, what should be our account name, we need to add our credit card there. So that's why we can create AWS setup over there. So when we are able to successfully log into this account, then we can see this console. When the login is successful, we can find this kind of console. Okay. So I do not have a, uh, I mean, a account over there. So that's why I have chosen the screenshots, picking up um, I mean, from suitable website and all to have um, or to have this knowledge with you, to share the knowledge with you. Okay. So the screenshot just after the logging in part, we can see this kind of screenshot uh, in the console. 
okay so all the things i mean what are the uh, different components are available uh, for this particular regions and all that can be done over here so over there you can see services all the services we can see i mean the, the context of services maybe in the left hand side you can see the console home ec2 s3 amazon so those are been used i'll be coming to this thing one by one if we just click on drop down of the services button you can see the thing in the next slide yeah this is the first side first second yeah second slide we can see in the right hand side top the region where our cloud uh on that particular account located okay so this kind of just like uh lots of regions are available in the world wide in every, every, every uh, as of now in every country there might have uh, lots of regions available just like you can see north virginia is there for usa east usa east for ohio is also there for west uh north Cal california is there so this kind of region is there we need to choose one of the region while spinning up a particular component okay uh, suppose i need to spin up s3 bucket or suppose i need to spin up ec2 server then i need to choose which particular region i need to pick it up okay and based on that i need to choose or i need to spin up that component and and my component or my data center specifically located at that region i can remotely access from that particular region and uh, but uh, the, the thing can be located at that particular point or that particular place over there but in i mean from the world every corner from the world we can access that particular system maybe there should be a lag suppose i'm locating in india or suppose a person locating in europe but the particular thing us is I mean, the particular server is being hosted from US East, I mean, uh, North Virginia. Then, uh, uh, I mean, the Europe European member might have less lag. Uh, the lag may be very less. Maybe it's range of microsecond or just like this. But based on the physical location as well, there may be a slight lag. So based on our project requirement or where the business located, uh, client should... Uh, choose the particular location as well okay maybe i have a europe client so they need to choose the location from europe only emea region uh, if i'm from asia side so they should choose apac region asia pacific okay you can see it's in jakarta in asia mumbai is there seoul singapore sydney so in apac region those are the data centers or uh, the region on that AWS can have their systems and all. Okay. Going to the next slide. Yeah. Then the services. What are you telling the first slide? If I click on top of services, we can see those are the different kind of services AWS will be providing to us. Analytics, AWS cost management, blockchain, business applications, computing, containers, databases the various developers tools okay okay after that there's a search bar i'm on the slide this is on the slide there's a search bar over there if any component i'm used to or i'm uh, i have the habit to check the component i can type the component directly over there and it will be showing us at the below what is the component and it will be showing us the thing over here okay so those are all uh, the quick things we can check from the cloud systems so now i'll be just giving you a basic things just like uh, what analytic service analytical service we can get from aws and i just pick it up what are the important one and maybe there are hundreds or i mean thousands of components are available over there okay but we do not uh, need to choose everything okay uh, we do not need everything over there just like uh, for analytics part there are amazon athena amazon emr for big data processing oh. amazon redshift for data warehousing amazon kinesis for interactive analytics uh, specifically talking that i did not use that kind of i mean 
kinesis anytime just for i mean learning purpose i have collected this information i did not use this thing as well this thing as well maybe in future i have a requirement to use that thing glue i have used it's a visual data preparation emr i have i already told you emr is for big data processing as per the requirement you can see there's a big uh, node that is the master node and those are core nodes and we i mean master and slave master should be divided the work to slave and slave will work it and they will submit reconcile and submit everything into the master so the the processing or the analytics should be distributed in nature everything should be first based on some partitioning on the database or anything and they can process it very much faster so each of the particular services or each of the component is having their own capability so based on that we need to choose which kind of service we need to take obviously we need to check the services as well okay so those are all analytical yeah. services okay data lake so data lake is means i mean we need to store the data in some components so what are the different components just like amazon s3 bucket this is very much popular okay S3 bucket, uh, the particular memory is, I mean, it's scalable and it's, I mean, uh, you can say it's infinite memory. We can store anything based on what memory usage we are doing. That thing will be required. I, I mean, uh, the particular pay, I, I mean, uh, thing we need to pay over there. AWS S3 is there, AWS S3 Glacier, AWS Glue, AWS Lake Formation, data exchange all the things are there uh, from my professional experience i have used aws s3 actually all the projects should be having this one for this same kind of data lake if we are just going to microsoft microsoft can provide us uh, blob storage okay it's similar kind of s3 s3 bucket okay compute services so for compute services, we are having this kind of thing. AWS EC2, AWS Lambda, Elastic Beanstalk, AWS Forget, AWS Wavelength. Those are the important topic. Uh, AWS EC2 is the more, most common one. Nowadays, we can also maybe uh, got, um, I mean, I we have heard that Lambda function and all. So AWS Lambda is there where we can directly uh, do the thing without server, okay? I mean, we can uh, type a code, we can debug a Python code there without purchasing a server. We just need to choose from drop down that which kind of language I want to run. Just we need to choose Python and then we need to put the code over there, then run the code. Okay, so it's totally serverless. AWS Lambda is there. AWS EC2 is based on server. Okay. okay. What are the different database services? Amazon relational database are those just like Aurora, Postgres, MySQL, or Oracle, those kind of databases we can uh, get supported from AWS. There are DynamoDB, this is one kind of NoSQL database. Oh, I think you have already, we have gone through what is SQL, NoSQL at the first day of our classes. So Amazon or AWS can help us with both, both kind of uh, database whether it's relational or non-relational it can help with both of them so dynamodb is one kind of non-relational database so there are i mean graphical database as well so if you are learning graph theory or anything uh, maybe neptune is one of them okay it's not relational one it's a graphical one so those are all the service provided from mysql so i just like mysql i have installed it over here at my system if I directly can choose MySQL from the cloud providers, I just need to open the thing and just I need to click the component top of MySQL opening the console of AWS. Then I can quickly use MySQL. No need to install, no need to install any patches, no need to install any updates over there. I can directly use it from my system remotely using that one. Suppose I'm, I'm loading a big table. I need to choose what kind of table or what should be the backup memory to store the data. 
I just need to choose that thing that should be ready for my site. Just I need to pay the thing. That's the entire thing. I mean, uh, I need to check what should be the pricing part if I choose this database and what is the performance as well. And uh, I mean, uh, if there is any downtime activity, what is the recent patches and the capability of uh, maybe MySQL, it's not good to connect with Python or just like this. I need to check that thing as well. But the integration perspective, which software or suite database is fine, I need to choose that one, okay, for my project purpose. But definitely if we are a new one for cloud, we should not. That should be from cloud architect or cloud developer. They will be taking care of this. But for learning purpose, we are learning this thing over here. Okay, so I was telling that thing cost effective or cost, I mean, how we can check the costing part. Okay, let me show you this thing. I have just pasted the link. It's one of the cost calculator of AWS for EC2. EC2 means the server. Let me just, just open this thing over here. So I was checking few at, I mean, uh, few days earlier. Okay, it's directly giving me this configuration EC2. Actually, I should not require this. Let me close it. No, actually, that is the main one. Okay, so this kind of thing we need to choose over here. Okay, so you can check the hourly cost should be just like this. And those are the specification name, different instance name. So suppose I'm using T4G Nano. Number of CPU should be two. Memory, that means RAM. RAM is very less. It's 0.5 GB. Okay, what is the hour I need to pay for this? It's 0.0042 dollar per hour. Okay, it should be USD. Yeah, so this kind of calculator, we can check it from here before spinning it up. Okay, so if I just go to higher one with some higher thing, uh, 2 GB, we can see definitely the price is getting increased. Okay, there are lots of series actually that I will be coming later. Mm, let me check if we have any other memory or 1 GB is the higher one. No, we can see uh, we can get this kind of memory as well for larger version of the software. This is for 64 GB RAM. Okay, uh, so this should be the pricing part. Obviously, CPU we can see. I'm sorry, okay, this is number of CPU, 64. This is number of memory. Memory is very much high. That's why that you can see $13 per hour. It's a big one. So maybe for large project uh, where, I mean, the transaction is very first, we are calculating the thing in very first way, then they can choose this kind of uh, instances or not. Or, but basically for our purpose or for our household purpose, we should not require that thing. That's why it's very much expensive, $13 per hour. So if you are using one month, uh, eight hours per day, so it's very much expensive as well. Okay. So this kind of pricing calculator, we can check, we can check over here. There are lots of things uh, on top of database, how we are using, what kind of database we are choosing. We need to choose those things based on the region as well. If we choose different region, we can see a slight changes in the component pricing as well. So based on the, we need to choose proper region or we can check uh, between regions, what is cost effective or not. Based on that, we can choose and proceed for the deployment part. Okay. So any doubt till now from anyone? <laughs> Maybe the thing is interesting to you, maybe not, uh, because it's not very much technical. Uh, it's most of the things on top of, we'll be learning the things as a theoretical part over here. Uh, but if there is any doubt, uh, please ask me, I'll be try to answer based on my mind. Okay. Uh, okay, the next topic, free tire services. So if you are a beginner of AWS, you just want to get hold of some of the components 
not for highly computing powers. Just you need to get accustomed of AWS. What is S3 bucket? You know, you need to configure something for your project purpose. Or you need to run some uh, Python code to check the Lambda functions or Lambda, Lambda component over there. So you can just choose AWS free tier services. And it's not for AWS actually, for all the cloud providers, they give some free tier services. To get you accustomed on the AWS consoles, how the consoles look like. Okay, so uh, just type over here, AWS free services. Let me, uh, yeah, Mac, okay. Uh, let me open Google and put AWS. Free services. Okay, or free tier account. Okay, let me let me check it for me. Ah, uh, give me one second. Okay. Okay, free tier account, we can see it's 12 months free and not for all the components. Some specific components I'll be getting this free thing. Just like for EC2, we can, we can get free for 750 hours. <clears throat> not for all the instances. The instance names are also mentioned over here. It's T2 micro or T3 micro. So it's maybe uh, the RAM should be 1 GB, uh, CPU should be 2. It's very low, obviously, because why they will be giving us free tab? There may be something. So AWS S3 bucket, till 5 GB I can store there. And it's 12 months free. It's one of the RDS, I mean, database, the 12 months free I can take up for my SQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, SQL Server. Okay, so if you want to learn the thing, we can log into AWS. And I can use free tier account without paying anything. But we need to keep in mind or we need to check from AWS pricing calculator or AWS website, what are the free tier services first? Okay, suppose EMR cluster, the clustering part to analyze big data, I cannot get any free tier things for AWS EMR. Okay, that is cost. Uh, that is costly. That's why they will not release this component in front of us. Okay, DynamoDB, 25 GB. Lambda function, we can run 1 million codes there. 1 million uh, code we can run. Okay, we can see this thing per, per month. Maybe 12 months we are having free thing, but we will we'll not be going to run this many, uh, thing. So uh, just check this thing. We have lots of services available. Check this and after checking, use that thing. If you are quite enthusiastic to uh, use AWS, or then you can just choose AWS as a free tier first and use it. Okay, so the next topic. Okay, so IAM, that is called Identity Access Management. Suppose I am the root user of the particular account, AWS account. I am the owner of this AWS account and I launched a EC2 server a uh, particular Dynamo database, a uh, uh, MySQL database, a particular EC2 server, I already told, IS3 bucket as well. But I can segregate the accesses. For EC2, I can give some access permission by ex identity access management. So I am is totally controlling the accessing part. So you are owner of this account, but you, you are the owner of this particular project as well. You need a developer who will be developing or who will be working on top of S3 bucket only. Then you can segregate the logging in logging part for each of the component based on IAM. So for developers who will be working for S3, they can log in from their credential uh, and they can only see this S3 bucket. They cannot see EC2 or the other services. Although uh, you have, I mean, uh, that can be controlled by this. IAM, Identity Access Management. You have the owner, you have the permission to set this access part. I'll be showing you. So tomorrow it, it should be a deeper one. I'll be going for some components, how to spin it up. So I'll be choosing two components only. 
in these classes. Uh, it should be easy to server. This is one of the important steps. How to spin up a server and S3 bucket. So these two I'll be taking into consideration to give you a I mean deep knowledge on top of that one. There we can see uh, how we can I mean uh, provide access to them. I mean the other developers or other support members how they can log in into there. Okay. Okay. Cloud watch. So based on our uh, usability or whatever we are using, what are the performance we can check the thing. In CloudWatch, just like average CPU utilization, the graphical thing. Okay, so we can check this thing from CloudWatch. The CPUs, the memory is everything. If I'm using some networking component the packets in, just like this kind of stuff, you can check it from CloudWatch. Okay, then the next topic is VPC and networking. If we launch the particular, uh, suppose we are using infrastructure as a services, then we need to check this kind of stuff, VPC and networking as well. But if we are using software as a services, we do not need to check this kind of stuff because networking should be totally controlled by their side, the cloud provider side. Okay. So uh, the VPC and networking, if I am choosing an EC2 server, then I must need to cho choose the particular subnet IPs where the particular EC2 should be located and i need to give a particular ip address to this ec2 otherwise that ec2 cannot be accessible from our system okay so if we are using or if we are checking this as a infrastructure as a services then we need to take this control the networking part of this component as well otherwise that cannot be accessed from remote that cannot be accessed from anyone's devices so uh, the gateway endpoints, those are the all important aspects we need to be, we need to choose while taking into consideration the networking part of this component. Okay. So when uh, our project is ready, we can see this kind of pipeline setup that mainly have should be done by the architect, just like the data source, particular component I have chosen for that one. Then I need to put this thing in S3 bucket then that can be processed by EMR cluster. The output result should be also put in S3 bucket. On top of the file put in S3 bucket, I can query it. It's a piece of database, okay? So I can query it over here. Or the data can be stored over here in Redshift at the tabular format, or maybe rather I can say relational database format, RDBMS. On top of these tables, I can create charts and graphs in quick sight. This is also AWS component. So this is these are all AWS component we can design in this way. Cloud architect need to determine this kind of flow chart or architectural diagram at the particular project level. And we need to spin up or not we actually the AWS developer or who will be responsible for AWS. Uh, they need to spin up the things and they need to work uh, this, in this way. Okay. Okay, so those are all the part what we just learned. Those are very basic thing and uh, uh, how to use for AWS console for spin up spin. I mean, uh, the new things, I mean, uh, what are the different services are there? How to check the calculating, I mean, how to check the calculator for each of the components and all we have covered today. So any doubt from your side? Any, any learning issue or uh, any anything more you need to learn but uh, for the scope of the chapter we cannot uh, move through a aws console uh, from the web portal because we i do not have the account but i get from lohit even uh, on the, the admin team that maybe it should be processed first maybe we can get an account so that we, we have the hands-on experience in the account itself uh, in the future sessions so uh, any doubt whatever we have learned today. Okay, nothing. So let's connect tomorrow with some more details with few components just like EC2 or S3 bucket, how to spin it up uh, with single step by step. I have the suitable screenshot with myself so that there'll be no issue whatever we will be doing uh, at the PPT one. And what parameters we need to choose after logging into AWS account and all to spinning up or to get ready with a AWS server. It should be hardly 
10 minutes we can spin up one EC2 server and that should be ready for us. No need to go to market to purchase a laptop. Rather, after seeing that, you can see or you can prefer to owning an AWS account and uh, you can quickly spin it up. And when it's required, just you can log in from your desktop over here to this remote server as well. Okay. Okay, then that's all for today's session. Let's connect tomorrow for more cloud computing part. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day.